If you're struggling with dipping on your dominant hand, then this one's going to be for you. What's up, Nail Crew? It's Nicole, your fellow Nail Obsessed DIYer. Today, we're using the Double Dip Dip Liquids and I'm going to be talking all about how I do some little tips and tricks to dip on my dominant hand. I'm right-handed, so my dominant hand is my right hand. And when I first started dipping with my left hand on my right hand, it was like a world of difference. It looked like um, probably a kid did it at first. And I don't think I showed anyone pictures of my right hand Manny, probably for at least like nine months. I don't think I posted any pictures of my right hand for probably close to a year after I started dipping. It was just a big difference. Some things that you're gonna wanna do is you wanna get as much liquid off the brush as possible. The nice thing about the double dip liquids is that you can really get a good amount of liquid off and they apply really thinly. You can press the brush down really well into your nail to get the liquid out of the brush. The brush holds the liquid well and to get that onto your nail. So you're able to keep your liquids thin. Something to be careful about when you have liquids like that is that sometimes they can run a little bit into your cuticles. So I kind of forgot about this. I haven't used the double dip liquids in, a, in in like two years so I forgot about that and I got a little bit of the liquids in some of my cuticles but once I remembered that then I was much more careful about making sure that I keep the brush away from my cuticle when I first apply it so I definitely wasn't doing a great job with that on some of my fingers when you apply your brush down onto your nail you want to start it away from your cuticle and push the brush back towards your cuticle and then drag it down your nail. That's gonna keep you from flooding your nails as much. So you can see, especially on my thumbnail, as I'm applying that, I definitely flooded my thumbnail a lot more than I did my other nails. I just kind of kept forgetting what to do <laughs> When when you use different liquids, you have to, you know, really get used to how the liquids work. I mean, dip liquids are all similar in that there's a base, an activator, and a top coat. Um, for the most part, you know, most liquids have, most dip liquids do three. I know there are some dip liquids that have a duo base and top, but to be honest, I couldn't stand those. Um, I think the shine was really bad, and I just did not like how those worked. So I've used those twice and then stayed away from them since then. So you're really just using a three-step system. But the thickness of the liquids, how they apply, the brush that it's using, um, that's all going to be things that if you use different liquids, you have to get used to that. So especially if you're using it with your non-dominant hand dipping your dominant hand, it's even more that you have to pay attention to and make sure that you're doing all the steps that you know will help you. So pushing back your cuticles before you apply each layer of dip, that's really going to help you to make sure that you don't flood them. And I did a much better job on my pointer through pinky than I did on my thumb. Really get in there and make sure you brush off all the excess powder in between your dips. That's also going to help you from getting your nails really chunky. When you're applying your dip powder, you know, it is definitely a big learning curve to dip with your non-dominant hand. Keeping the liquids thin, brushing off the powders, those are going to really help you. Make sure that you take a pointy nail tool and trace around your cuticles after every single dip. That's also going to help you keep the liquids and the powders off your, off your cuticles and off your skin. The more that you get the liquid and the powders on your cuticles and on your skin, the more likely you are going to get lifting. And, you know, it can make your skin a little bit itchy and give you contact dermatitis if you do it a lot. We definitely don't want that. We want to be able to do our beautiful dip nails as much as we possibly can. Whenever I'm finished with all the layers of my dip color, whether it's a glitter, shimmer, flake, foil, or a flat, flat color, I always top with clear dip powder. This seals in your dip color, and when you go to buff and shape and file, then you're not messing with the consistency of your color. You're just filing and shaping and buffing over top of the clear dip powder. You wanna make sure you apply this as thinly as possible as well. So do the same technique of taking your brush, getting as much of the dip base off it as you can, set the brush down away from your cuticles and then push it back towards your cuticles to fan it out and then drag it down your nail. That's going to always give you the best coverage possible on your nails along with keeping the liquids really thin so you're not accidentally flooding your cuticles. Sometimes I like to go into a lot of technical stuff because I know when I was first starting out dipping I was really frustrated by a lot of the videos that I saw that talked a lot or just had music playing and weren't exactly explained to me what they were doing with their nails. I like to go into 
into a good amount of like the technical what i consider like the technical part of the mani not just the fluff to make sure that you guys really understand what you're doing and it's not frustrating when you're starting dipping your nails at home by yourself once you've gotten your clear over all your nails make sure you brushed off really well with a stiff nail brush and then apply your activator over all of your nails i like to not go crazy with it with the double dipped liquids you don't need a ton of it you just want it to cover your entire nail the way that I can tell if my activator is dry is by tapping my nails. And if it makes like a clicking tapping sound, then you know your nails are hardened and they're ready to go to be buffed and shaped. I did that off camera because we're going to do some really fun stamping. And <laughs> spoiler, alert, spoiler alert, I messed up the stamp, but I'm going to go through and show you guys what I messed up and how I am so forgetful that I'll, I'll explain to you what I did. After my nails have been buffed and shaped and filed, I spray them with ice purple alcohol and wipe them off with a lint-free wipe or sometimes I use a stiff nail brush. I have all my supplies out. I have my sticky base. I have my top coat. I have the colors I want to use. I want it to look like kind of like a funky Halloween type web design. I was using the second one and what I didn't do was I had black polish out. I had the Maniology um, straight up black and then the Bam white. I meant to use the white first so that the black would pop over top of it. And what did I do? Did I do that? Absolutely not. I grabbed, <laughs> I grabbed the black first and did that as the first layer. And I did not notice what I did until right there. I was going in with the white, pressing it down, and then I I realized oh my gosh I totally did the wrong order so now the white's on top and it does not look how I want to do but I did the stamp really nicely so I didn't want to wipe it off and not have the stamp look look so good if I try to do it again sometimes what happens when I get really frustrated I try to do it a second or third or fourth time and I end up getting so frustrated that I just make a huge mess and it gets worse and worse instead of looking better so what I'll often do which is why you see me not fix my mayonnaise as much uh, as other as other people do I just kind of go with it and go with what I have now if I had just stamped the image onto my stamper and realize like oh I didn't pick up the image that great then I would have gone through and redid the stamping but once it's on my nail like I don't often take it off I have a few times that I like majorly messed it up for the most part you're not going to see me take the stamps off my nails okay once those puppies are on they're staying on there I've been using a non-acetone polish to go around my cuticles instead of acetone since I found that I'm allergic it's worked really really well it's called mineral fusion I just got it off Amazon and that takes any of the polish that's on my skin off but to be honest I didn't do that great of a job of it because I was I was tired <laughs> over the time I'm on my right hand at night it's usually pretty late and I'm like eh it'll be fine so once the stamp totally dried I went over with Maniology smudge free top coat and then I went over it with a Seche Vide fast dry top coat both of them dry pretty fast and the Seche Vide fast dry fast dry top coat gives you a really nice shine now we're going to do the top coating with the double dip dip liquid and I had to to go back through the instructions since it's been a while since I did this top coating. So what you want to do with the liquids is you want to apply the activator on all five nails. You want to do one hand at a time and you don't want to use a ton of activator. So I just took enough activator onto my brush that it covered my nail. I didn't go back over it multiple times. I just went through it once and I saw that the activator was all over my nail and then that was it. That's the only amount that I did. Once you get to your pinky count to 30 before you go in with your top coat, waiting much longer than 30 seconds to start with your first layer of top coat is gonna make your top coat streaky. In between each nail, you wanna make sure that you wipe your activator brush off on a lint-free wipe. Since I didn't do the dip top coat on my ring finger, I just pretended like I was doing it. This way my timing is correct. That's what I do no matter what dip top coat I'm using. You pretend you're doing it on that nail and then your timing is correct. When you're doing the top coating, you make sure that you wipe off the brush in between each layer on a lint-free wipe as well. And you wanna keep the dip top coat as thin as possible and float your dip top coat over your nail. When you press it into your nail too hard, that's gonna contaminate the top coat and make the brush hard. Through the whole process of dipping on your dominant hand, you have to give yourself a lot of grace and work with a lot of patience, okay? I'm not the most patient person in the world, like if at all, but I promise you, the more you do it, the better you're going to get at dipping on your dominant hand. And if you're struggling with dipping, check out this next video on 10 reasons your dip nails are lifting. Thanks so much for joining me today, Nail Crew.